Hello everyone, we're looking at um, a tricky parametric um, equation question, an A star question. And in fact, this is the last paper of, uh, last question rather, of paper one, 2018 for Edexcel. Okay, so we have, it says a curve C has parametric equations, X is equal to three add two sine T, and Y is equal to four add two cos two T. First of all, we've got to show that all points satisfy the Cartesian equation y is equal to 6 minus um, x minus 3 all squared. So we need to go from parametric to Cartesian. So first of all, we need to use some kind of an identity um, in order to help us do that, a trig identity. And sine squared t add cos squared t equals 1 would seem to be the perfect identity that we could use. So ultimately, we're going to want to try and um, use that identity to help us break things down. OK, so let's think, well, first of all, the X is quite nice because we've got X. The parametric equation is X is equal to three add two sine T. So therefore we have X minus three divided by two is equal to sine T. So we found an expression there for X, which can be uh, for sine rather, which can be subbed into our trig identity. The Y equation is a involves a little bit more um, manipulation because we've got y is equal to 4 plus 2 um, cos 2t. So we need a way of replacing the cos 2t. And in order to do that, what we do is we make use of the double angle formulae. So cos 2t is equal to cos squared t minus sine squared t. And we're looking to ultimately get a cos squared so we need to replace sine squared with one minus cos squared. So we have, whoops, uh, cos squared t minus that. So we end up with two cos squared t minus one is our expression for cos two t. So now we're going to sub that um, in place of our cos two t in this expression. And that's now going to give us that y is going to equal 4 plus 2 lots of uh, 2 cos squared t minus 1. So we're just subbing um, the result that we got using the double angle formulae into this expression. And now we've got that y is equal to 4 add 4 cos squared t minus 2. So therefore y is equal to... Um, 2 plus 4 cos squared t. And that's great because this can be rearranged to give us our cos squared. So now our cos squared t we can think of as being y minus 2 over 4. So we've got our two expressions now that are ready to be used to be subbed into our cos squared add sine squared is equal to 1, or sine squared add cos squared is 1. So let's write that down and sub those in. So now we have here that sine squared t add cos squared t is equal to 1. Sine squared is now x minus 3 over 2, all squared. Cos squared, this is already squared, so we don't need to do any further squaring here. OK, so we've now subbed in, and this is great because we've, all, we've gone from parametric to Cartesian now. This expression is x minus 3, all squared over 4, and that is y minus 2 over 4 equals 1. So we're now going to multiply uh, both sides by 4. So let's do that. Let's put this here. OK, so let's multiply both sides by 4. So we've now got x minus 3 all squared plus y minus 2 is equal to 4 when we times both sides by 4. And as you can see, we're almost there now. So we just need to take everything um, over the one side. So add the two over here and subtract the x minus three all squared. Gives us y is equal to six minus x minus three all squared um, as required. Okay. Uh, certainly a lot of working there for two marks. But there we go. I mean, I think it's obviously because it's a question 14 with it being uh, a very challenging A star question. Now, um, the next bit, again, has got quite a few little twists and turns. It says now we've got to sketch the curve of C. Well, we can see that because we've got the whole thing in completing the square form, 
that we can find the coordinates of the turning point and we know that we've got a negative quadratic. So because we're in completing the square form, we have a negative quadratic and the turning point is going to have a vertex at 3, 6. So there's our vertex of our quadratic at 3, 6. Now, the only question is, obviously, in this Cartesian equation, um, the curve's going to carry on forever down there. But we've got a parametric equation and we need to think about what are the limits of our parameter. So let's look at the x equation. The x equation that we have is x is equal to 3 plus 2 sine t. And further to that, we're told that the values of the parameter are that t is less than 2 pi, but greater than or equal to 0. Now, the maximum and minimum that this sine expression can be in the interval between 0 and 2 pi is 1 and minus 1. Okay, So if we think about our maximum value of x, that's going to occur when sine is equal to 1. So we're going to have uh, x is equal to 3 add 2. So x is equal to 5 is going to be our maximum value of x that we can have. Our minimum value is going to occur in this parametric equation when sine t is minus 1. So that's going to give us 3 um, minus 2. OK, so we're going to end up with 1 there is going to be our minimum value. So that means that in this parametric uh, Cartesian curve, we can only have one there as our minimum value here, and we can have five here as our minimum value um, of the um, Cartesian. Let's think about what are the corresponding y values. So in this case, y would equal six minus five minus three, all squared, subbing into the Cartesian equation. Uh, which is going to give us um, 6 minus 2 squared, which is 6 minus 4, which is 2. And then for the other value, we have 6 minus um, 1 minus 3, all squared, which again is 6 minus 2 squared, which is 2 again. So we end up with the 2 as the y value for both of them. And that's our sketch um, of the um, curve for part uh, B part 1. So quite important as well that we have the shape of the curve and we have um, these limits about where the curve starts, ends and the turning point of the curve. OK, now for the next bit, part two, it says explain briefly uh, why the curve doesn't include all values or real values. And the answer is it's just because um, from the parametric equation for X, the domain, as we've seen, is restricted between um, x is less than or equal to 5, but greater than or equal to 1. So it's because we can only have a domain um, of x is less than or equal to 5, but greater than or equal to 1. That's why the curve doesn't continue for all real values. Yeah, we only have a restricted range of values in the domain. Right, now this next bit of the question is the super tricky bit that I know that from experience... Um, over the years that students find this bit really tricky. And of course, it's the last five marks on the paper, so it's definitely A star material. The line with equation x add y equals k, where k is a constant, intersects c at two distinct points. State the range of values of k, writing your answer in set notation. OK, well, first of all, the equation x add y equals k can be rearranged into y equals k minus x. So we can just rearrange it into that format. Now let's have a sketch of the curve um, and the coordinate axes just to try and get a feel for what's happening. So here's our portion of the um, quadratic curve that we've got. OK, so we know those two points there. We know that this turning point here is um, 3, 6. We know that this point here is um, 1, 2. That's that point. And we know that this point is 5, 2. Now, the curve, the line rather, y equals k minus x, can be yeah, another way to write that is to think of that as y is equal to minus x add k. So in other words, it's like the line y equals minus x, except... Uh, depending on what the value of k is, it could be anywhere up here. So 
all of those like kind of parallel lines that I've drawn are all possible uh, possible lines that could have the uh, equation y equals minus x add k. So we're told in the question that it intersects the curve C, the line intersects the curve C at two distinct points. And we've got to try and think about um, what are um, the where, what are the range of values that we can have for this curve. So the first point at which the line is going to intersect the curve twice is when we have this particular line here. OK, because you can see we up until prior to that, we're only intersecting once. So here, well, here we've got no points of intersection. Here we're intersecting once, intersecting once. But when we get to this point, we're starting to intersect twice. OK, now the point that starts to intersect twice is when we go through that point there. And we know that that point has the coordinate 5, 2. So that means that for that point there, when we sub into the equation x add y is equal to k, that means that we have 5 add 2 is going to equal to k, so 7 is equal to k. So at the point where k equals 7, we start to have two solutions. Now we continue to have two solutions all the way up until we get to the point here where the curve is a uh, tangent to the line. OK, and it's at that point where we stop having two solutions. But in this whole range of values here that I'm shading now. In that whole shaded region, there are two solutions and we stop having two solutions at the point where this line is a tangent to the curve. Now, that should be suggesting it's a, a certain approach to us. And the approach, the appropriate approach is we're going to sub in the equation of our line into the equation of our curve, we're then going to evaluate the discriminant and set it equal to, well, we want to set the discriminant as being um, greater than zero. Because when we set the discriminant as being greater than zero, that's going to give us the range of values of which there are um, at least one solution. Okay, so let's do that then. So we're going to, um, first of all, sub in the equation of the line into the equation of the curve. And the equation of the curve is um, y is equal to 6 minus x minus 3 all squared. And so we're going to say that minus x add k is equal to uh, 6 minus x minus 3 all squared. So 6 minus x minus 3 all squared. OK, so let's start to expand this now. Minus x add k is equal to 6 minus x squared minus 6x plus 9. Let's remove the brackets. 6 minus x squared plus 6x. And that's going to be minus 9. It's equal to minus x add k. I'm going to get the whole thing over to the left-hand side now. That gives me x squared. I'm going to take off another 6x, so minus 7x. Dealt with that, dealt with that. Um, 6 minus 9 is going to be minus 3, and that's going to go to plus 3 when it's added across to the other side. And then we've got plus k. Let's group those two together because they're going to be our c. OK, and that is our quadratic. OK, perfect. So we want to know um, the range of values of which we're going to have these two solutions. So we need to basically say that we're going to set it uh, greater than um, zero. OK, so we're going to say greater than zero. And let's have a little think about this then. So that is going to be uh, our A is going to be one. Our B is going to be the minus seven. And our C is going to be the three add K. All right, so let's evaluate our discriminant now. B squared minus four AC is greater than uh, greater than zero for our two solutions. B squared minus four a c is greater than zero. OK, so we're going to have B, which is going to be minus seven squared minus four times A, which is one times C, which is three add K is greater than zero for two solutions. So 49 minus four times by three add K is greater than zero. So 49 minus 12 minus 
um, 4K is greater than zero. So that's going to be 37 um, minus 4K is greater than zero. If we continue over here, adding the 4K across to the other side, we now have 37 is greater than 4K. And finally, dividing by four, we have 37 is greater over four is greater than K. Or we could write that as K is less than 37 over four. Okay, so we've now completed our question because we found that the range of values that we know need is we know from before that the K has to be greater than seven because we found earlier that it was when K equals seven that we start to have um, our solutions. And we found that it needs to continue all the way up to K being um, 37 over four is the point that corresponds to this point where it's a tangent, okay? So therefore what we're saying is in order to have two solutions, K must be less than 37 over four. It has to be less than 37 over four because at the point where it is actually 37 over four, there's only one solution at that point, okay? So that's why there's a strict inequality here because it must be less than that in order to have two solutions but it needs to be greater than or equal to seven. And again, the reason this is greater than or equal to is because when it equals seven, we have those two solutions going through that point and that point there. So a strict inequality there, and you can have the greater than or equals to here. Uh, we haven't quite finished because the question says it wants us to express the whole thing in set notation. So let's say that this is K is a member of the set where K is less than 37 over 4, but greater than or equal to 7. And we put that in our curly brackets for set notation. And that is the final answer to that question. I thought that was quite tricky. And in my experience, um, especially that part C is conceptually quite difficult for students to grasp. And I know from previous experience that uh, many students struggle with that particular part of this question in previous years. I hope that you found that helpful and I will see you in the next video.